I think that is the worst, worst advice that you can give someone. Why would you do a job that you don't want to do in the end and that is only loosely related to what you want to do for one to two years to then hopefully get into that job? Hey guys, today we are looking at a terrible advice post on LinkedIn regarding getting the job that you like. This is based on data engineering, but this works for all the other jobs also in tech. So let's look at this. I think you're going to see what I mean. So here's a post from Sahin. Um, I wouldn't advise you to try for data engineering right out of college. This is here in India, but I think it's general. Um, it's a general bad advice wouldn't try to advise to get into right away. Uh, there are rare cases where some do find data engineering roles as a fresh graduate. Uh, there's some truth in here. Yes, there are not so many beginner roles here. That is right now, that's a bit of a problem. Companies always want to have experts. So let, let's just go through the points why this is so complicated here. I think the points are really good, but the end idea here isn't that good. So data engineering demands expertise, experience, and deep understanding of complex systems. That is true. It's about more than just writing code. I think that is true for almost any job um, because the writing the code is usually the easy part. The understanding part is, is the hard part. So he says here, data engineers are responsible for designing and maintaining distributed systems that process terabytes or even petabytes of data daily. This requires a solid grasp of distributed computing, parallel processing and fault tolerance. Yes, um, not in every job, in in a lot. It always depends on the tools. But so it's more about than writing just code, just writing code. Building reliable data pipelines isn't easy. Yes, that's also something you need to train. You need to uh, have or practice and get experience on. Production grade data pipelines must operate with, well, actually 99.99 is not that high. Um, but yeah, reliability, ensuring data flows seamlessly across the systems. Again, that's something you have to practice. You have to find out and you, or basically you have to mostly test. Testing is the big problem here and understanding the data. This involves mastering ETL, ELT processes, orchestration tools, monitoring. So yeah, cloud platforms are the backbone of modern data engineering. Well, of course, I mean, you need to have some experience, at least some starter experience on one cloud platform is important, I think. Whether it's AWS, Azure or GCP, data engineers need to architect scalable solutions that optimize storage, compute and cost all within ensuring data security and compliance. That, that It's a very good um, good point here. Yes, we, we need to do this. At what level though for beginners? That's a bit of a uh, thing, right? Choosing the right database, database architecture and storage optimization are critical. Choosing the right database, relational versus no SQL. Oftentimes this is already done. So you're because you're not starting from greenfield indexing and so on are essential for performance at scale. Yes, but I would also argue this is something you can learn. Um, troubleshooting and scaling are non-negotiable -neg skills. Yes, but this is also something you can learn, right? So you don't have to be an expert. This is something you can also get if you have training on the job, if you have a mentor on the job, this is something you can get into. When something breaks in production, when systems need to scale to handle growing data volumes, it is the data engineers who is, or the data engineer who steps in to fix it. Yes. So more than writing code, building data pipelines, cloud platforms you need to work with, database architecture, troubleshooting, right? So I, I mean, this, this is not the big deal. Now let's be real, he says here. Data engineers need to go through the grind for a few years to handle all of this very well. And that is that is true. That is actually true. To, to really be able to do all of this in a like really good way and to be an expert, writing, not just writing code, understanding what to do, building reliable data pipelines, cloud working with cloud platforms, database architecture, troubleshooting and scaling and so on. These are all topics you need to be an expert in, but not at the beginning, right? If you're coming out of university, why? This is, is unrealistic. If you, for a beginner job, 
training on the job is is, is absolutely possible. So uh, you need all of this, right? The solution, and the, here's the terrible part. This is where I think is completely wrong. If you are usually interested to get into data engineering, my personal take is that you should try to get into data analyst roles first and then keep upskilling in data engineering for about one to two years, then give it a try. And I think that is the worst, worst advice that you can give someone. This is absolutely terrible. This like, think about it. Why would you do a job that you don't want to do in the end and that is only loosely related to what you want to do for one to two years to then hopefully get into that job. That is like, that's the wrong progression. You can progress very easily from analyst to engineer. That, that's possible. I have in my academy, I have courses on this. I also coached a lot of people doing this. It's not a problem. But if you don't want to do this, or if your, your goal is engineering, then you need to find an engineering job. Don't take that detour of doing something different first. Focus on this and get into this. The thing is, don't just focus on data engineering here. You need to have practice. And in engineering, not, not analytics, not analytics, in engineering, because you don't want to get stuck in, in analytics, right? So you don't focus just on data engineering jobs. You look at a lot of different jobs that are all loosely related to data engineering. Could be some cloud developer jobs, right? ETL developer jobs. Basically jobs, and there are a, a bunch of names. Cloud developer, you could also search for specific ones like Databricks developer, Spark developer, um, AWS developer, and so on and so on. You are going to search for jobs that are where you work with data, work with a part of the tools that you have as a data engineer. And we say, seen here, cloud is one of the important things. So I would advise use one of the clouds. And then once you have that job, it's easier to transfer or to, to, to switch to a more senior role, right? Because you already have the engineering skills. So whatever you do, it doesn't matter if it's here in data engineering, if it doesn't matter if it's in data science, doesn't matter if it's in tech at all. What you want to do is you want to follow that path. You have that idea, you want to get that job and then you want to work towards that job, right? You don't want to take a detour and then hopefully switch over to that job. That doesn't work. That's a terrible advice. So don't do that. If you think about in this case, if you think about data analytics or data analysts could also be fun, might be interesting. But if you're in an engineering university, if you're working with computer science, then or engineering, you want to also follow through on this. Yes, it might not be in the beginning a data engineer job that you get, but it might be one of these lower, let's call it lower. It's not really lower, but related jobs and then later move on to a data engineer role or if maybe you also grow in that role and uh, you do engineering uh, and it's not called data engineer that can also be true right so again my advice like this is a terrible advice that if you really want to do first get into a different role no do not do this what you want to do is you want to follow through search for adjacent roles, get experience there, and then it's easy to actually transfer or then it's easy to move into that role that you actually want, right? Like think about it. If you want to become a race car driver, you will not start as one of the pit crew first. And then hopefully after some years of pit crew training, you move into a race car driver. Doesn't make sense. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think. I've also put the link to this post in the comments. And do me a favor, hit the like button on this and share this with a friend. And then see you in the next video.